Hello and welcome to All Around the Board. Today we are going to take a look at Animix Park by Blue Orange Games. This is definitely, well, at the moment, my favourite 10 minute filler game. It has a wonderful theme and an awesome mechanic which you guys will see in today's video. Today's video will consist of uh, how to set up, how to play, and at the very end we will show you a two player playthrough of this. The aim of Animix Park is to get the most points. Now players are going to score on a certain type of animal depending on if they control the most in that animal type. So for example, if I had the most lions down in front of me at the end of the game, I am going to score for lions. Same goes for every creature type. Every single animal has a different way of scoring and in the top left hand corner of each card is a reminder of the way that they score. I'm going to go through the individual scoring just a little bit later on in the video, but for now I'm going to go through the mechanics and how a turn works. The first thing you're going to need to do is find out how many players you've got. That will depend on how many different animals you need to choose and how big the grid will be. For today's example, I've actually gone for a six player game, which includes seven different types of animals. Uh, I haven't included the chameleon, but we will talk about the chameleon. And I've set it out in a 6x6 six six grid because that is how we play for 6 players. Once you've set out your grid, you're going to then deal 6 cards from the remaining deck to each player. Unless you're playing with 6 players, then you need to deal out 5 to each player. As soon as each player has either their 5 or 6 cards, and remember this is a 6 player example, so I only have 5 cards. As soon as you have these, you can start the game. Starting with the first player, they get to choose one card out of their hand and they can do one of two things with that card. They can either choose the card and put it face down in front of them to start their pile. And remember you want the majority of a, a card to score that type. So I might think yes I want to go for lions so I'm going to put this lion face down and I'm going to start working towards collecting my lion. Other players do not see this however you can keep checking uh, this pile, that's not a problem. If you don't want to just do straight from hand to the pile, you can do one other action. This is your second action, or second choice of action that you can do. You can take the card uh, that you, you probably won't want this one, and you can swap it with any card in the grid. Uh, and then this card that you take will then go face down in front of you. Uh, obviously that was a monkey that I put down. And the card that you placed on the grid will then get a token and you're just gonna put it on top of that card. What this represents, this token, is you cannot swap with this card. So this is permanently in play now. As players continue with their turns, carrying on uh, swapping out uh, creatures, like I'm doing here, or they're just taking from their hand and putting it in front of them, eventually there's gonna be more and more of these tokens going down. And these are just gonna stick these animals into this location, and this will mean that Wherever they are in the location means they're definitely going to score. Players will continue to take one of these two actions until all players have put all cards from their hand either onto the grid or down in front of them. If you're playing with a six player game you should have five cards at the end but if you're playing with less than six players you should have six cards out in front of you. You're then going to check which animals you have the majority of. Uh, you can see that I've got one of each here. Uh, it might be that another player has already got more lions so I can get rid of that. I know I'm not going to score lions uh, but I'm the only one with elephants but someone else has more, has more pelicans than me. And you keep going until you then finalise which ones you've definitely got the majority of. If there is a tie, say another player also has one elephant and that is the majority, then both players will score for that particular animal. Now is the time that I am going to go through how these actually score individually. I'll go through the eight animals one at a time. So the first animal we're going to look at is the monkeys. So with the monkeys, you are going to score two points for every monkey that you have in one vertical column. So at the end of the game, you're going to choose one column. In this scenario, we have two columns that both have three each. We can choose either of them. It really doesn't matter because it's going to score the same points. So let's say we're going to go for this column here, and you'll notice there are one, two, three monkeys in this column. That would score you two, four, six points. 
Next up we have the elephant card. So what you'll notice uh, in the top left hand corner, it's similar to the monkey symbol, but it goes in a row. So just like the monkey, you're gonna choose one row that has the most elephants in, and I think it's this one here. Uh, and we have three in a row, so that will get me two, four, six points for the elephants if I have majority. Next we have the penguin card. So they are gonna score two points for each penguin that is in the largest cluster. And they have to be touching adjacent and not diagonal. So for example, we have up here, we've got a penguin on his own, so we're not gonna score him. But we do have a cluster of five penguins here. In this case, I'll get two, four, six, eight, ten points for the penguins. Then we have the pelican card. So you'll notice that these are at a diagonal uh, for your reminder. So you're gonna score two points for every pelican card that is on a diagonal. And you're gonna choose the one with the most in a diagonal. In this case, I think we got one here, but that would only get you two. So it would be this one here. So you get two, four, six points for the pelicans. Then we have the lovebirds. So uh, these will get four points for every pair that are together. In this scenario, we have two here and we have two here. That one would score me four and this pair would score me another four, getting me eight in total. I cannot use a lovebird a second time to count for another pair. So this I paired with this, which means I cannot pair this one with this individual bird. Any individual birds are just not counted in this scoring. So in this example, I have four, eight points. The next card is the lion card. So the person who has got the majority of the lions will score 11 points minus the amount of lions left on the board. So in this situation we have one, two, three, four, five uh, lions and that would only score me six points because obviously it's 11 take away the five. Now a special rule with the lions is you have to have at least one line on the board at the end of the game to actually score. So the max amount of points you can get out of this is actually 10. Um, but if, you, if there were no lines on the board at all, then this would score zero. And finally, we have the chameleon, who I left out at the beginning of this video. So this one, you're gonna find the chameleon with the most amount of different types of animal around it. In this case, it's this chameleon. And you're gonna get two points for every different type of animal around it. So this will get me two, four, six, eight. And this does include another chameleon. So uh, th this is why this is uh, different. So I'm scoring this one, and this is a different species. So that would score uh, eight points there. And actually, that's the max amount of points you could score for a chameleon. This chameleon here would have only scored six points, however, because these two are the same type of animal. And that's everything you need to know about scoring. R just a reminder, each player will see who has the majority of each animal, score for that particular animal uh, give, going by its reminder in the top left hand corner, and then see who is the final player. A few final thoughts about this before we show you a two player playthrough. Firstly, I wish there was a score sheet. Um, it's worth just getting a pen and paper and jotting them down to be honest, but I wish it had a little score sheet of some kind, or at least an app that we can score on. The other thing is, is I don't think this game is actually very good with two players. I know we're going to show you a two player version, but I think it's better with six for two reasons. One, there's more variety of animals. In a six player game, you actually have seven different animals, whereas in a two player game, you only have three different types of animals. There's eight animals in total, and I like to include as many as I possibly can. It makes it uh, a bit more of a difficult game. The other reason is the grid is much bigger. So in a six player game, it is six by six. But if I was playing with just two players, well actually I have to make that grid a four by four. And as you can tell, it's far smaller and less chance of actually scoring a variety of animals. But overall, if I've got six players or even five or maybe four, I love this game. It's gonna be one of those games that is definitely gonna be played when you've got a 10 minute gap between games or just something to end the night. It's thinky, but not too taxing on the brain. And actually it's really good for, I would say any age. It does say eight plus on there, but I think, uh, especially if you're playing with less uh, animals, I think younger ages could get on board with this game. And another personal note, I love the artwork. It's got something very Lion King about it. Uh, not sure why. Anyway, guys, let's play a two player. I'm gonna get Jess in here and we're gonna play two players. Uh, and carry on watching, see who wins, because it'll probably be her. Right, Jess, are you ready to get your butt kicked? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, 
Well, actually, you're going to get yours. Ooh, fighting words. Okay, so just to remind you guys of the setup. So we're playing two players. We've picked three animal types. We've picked wolves, lions, and penguins. Mm -hmm. We've uh, put that into a four by four grid. Dealt six to each player. So these are the six in my hand. Jess has her six. And it does leave us with two spare cards. We don't know what the spare cards are, but they just need to be put back in the box. They will not be used. Any spare cards will just be put away. So as... Um, Jess, you can go first, so you can either take one from your hand and put it face down in front of you towards your pile because you're trying to get the majority at the end, or you can take one from hand and switch it with one on the board and put the one that you've switched face down. A common rule that I've found with playing this with new players, just a quick one, is some people think that once you switch and that it goes into your hand and it does not, it has to go face down in a pile. Um, and then once your hand has run out, that's when the game ends. So what are you going to do, Jess? I'm going to switch a wolf for a lion. Okay, so the lion is going face down in front of you. That is the start of your pile. And this wolf is uh, definitely going to stay there. Now, wolves uh, looks like it's going to be a good uh, shout. So I'm going to take this wolf and put it face down in front of me. And I'm going to replace it with a penguin. Uh, so remember with penguins, uh, or just a reminder of all of them actually, penguins are going to get two points for the biggest cluster. So at the moment, penguins are scoring six, and the wolves are scoring two points for each one on the outside. So they're actually scoring 12 at the minute. Um, and then the lions are scoring 11 minus the amount of lions out, so they're scoring seven at the moment. But I'll update you as we go. Anyway, Jess, what would you like to do? Um... I am going to swap a wolf for a lion again. Ooh. Didn't want that. Okay, oh, because you're going to, it looks like Jess is going for a lion. So I know that that is Jess's second lion. Ha, no. Um, yeah, and she's putting the, uh, the mountain token on, so it will stay there. I think I'm going to take this wolf, put it face down in front of me, and replace it with another penguin. Right, then it's Jess's next can you go. Just take one from your hand and do that. You can. You can just take it from your hand and place it, and that will be your action instead. That's my action. Right. I think I need to replace this penguin. So I'm going to take the penguin and put it face down, and put this lion in its place. Because I think Jess has got lions. It, she's definitely got two. She might even have a third already, and I can't catch up with that. Um, um, so I need to sort of get as many lines on the board so that she scores less points for it. I'm going to swap this lion for a penguin. Mm. Okay. So she's definitely got three lines in there and I can't beat three lions. So I think she doesn't need any more lions. Um, well, I might do. You never know. Okay, I'm going to... That's true. I'm going to take the wolf put it face down and I'm going to replace it with a penguin and put that into play. So at the moment penguins are scoring 12 now so we definitely want to get is penguins. It less, it's, is it more points for the less lines are on the board? Yes. Alright. So that, yeah. Okay, I'm going to swap this lion for a lion. Ah, good idea. So that that way you de you've definitely got lions now, just to let you know. There's no possible way I can beat you on that. Um, so it might be worth trying to get a majority in something else. I'm going to take this penguin, put it face down, and replace it with another penguin. So that's another rule you can do. You can swap like for like animals, because then it gets locked in. I'm going to swap this penguin for a lion. Okay, penguin's going to go face down. And then I'm going to swap... Why did I do that? I did wonder. I did wonder. Uh, I'm going to then swap... I think I've got majority on penguins, so I'm going to swap this wolf for this penguin. But then the wolf goes face down and the penguin stays there. And that's all six of yours, yeah? Yeah. Right, so then we're going to lay out uh, what we have. So I have two penguins and four wolves. We've got one penguin and five lions. Right, so going on majority, you've got majority lions, I don't have any, but I've got majority penguins, so you can get rid of that penguin. 
Okay, Jess is going to score 11 minus 4, because there's four lines out. 11 minus 4 equals 7. 7, so you've got 7. Yes. With, with my wolves, I've got 2, 4, 6, 8. And with my penguins, I've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. So in total, I've got 22. Let's see. But if you'd have gone for, 22. If you'd have gone for penguins as well, or, or at least yeah. taken them out, then uh, then you would have got a bit less. So, even though it's a great game, with two players, as you can see, it's quite simple. And it's quite quick. In a two-player game as well, you'll find, I didn't want to say this before, but I will say it now, you will find that one person, if they've got the majority in two animals, they've almost definitely won. Yeah. Yeah, so you want to, that's why I was trying to go for the two. I noticed you were going for lions, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to completely ignore lions. Ooh. You said I had like at least three lines in my hand. That was when you. No, that's when you had three cards down. I said you've got at least. I said you've got at least two, but possibly a third. But you said it when I had four lines. So you could have got away with just sticking with three lines, and then continued to get. Because if you'd have got three penguins, you'd have actually beaten me. But that's hindsight, and obviously you wouldn't have known specifically what was under my uh, under my board. But there you go. That is a quick show of Animix Park. Uh, if you guys would like to see um, a bigger game, I'd like to do a live playthrough of this, maybe with more players. But if that's something you'd like to see, let us know in the comments below. Also, please subscribe if you haven't already. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter. And if you've got time, just give this uh, video a like. Oh, and also, underneath, there is a link to our Patreon page, yeah. uh, where you can support us for as little as one pound a month to make yeah. these videos. Anyway, thanks guys for watching. Uh, thanks for letting me beat you, Jess, and we'll catch you on the next video. Yeah.